she's got it. Thank oh, you for yeah. coming today and uh, sharing your story with us a little bit. Rhea, may I ask you to tell us a little bit about you and your sports? Of course. Thank you. Um, I am going, sorry, I'm right now I'm training for Olympic trials coming up in June. Um, I started training competitively in swimming when I was 17, so I had a little bit of a late start, but that also happened to be the year that ASEA came out. Um, so I've actually been on ASEA the entire time I've been competitive swimming, and it has done wonders for me. <laughs> training went in high school. Um, I started at SIA and I trained really hard and I was able to get a scholarship to Texas A&M University. So I'm for them for four years. My sophomore year I made the 2012 Olympic team and got a gold medal with the medley relay team. And since then I have broken about five or six American records and uh, have continued to train and I've been professional for two years now and, and finally a, and to see a sponsored athlete which I've been waiting for for a while so this has been really exciting. That's a, that's a tough act to follow. I once lifted some things. Oh uh, no. Um, I grew up kind of in a crazy a crazy way. Um, I never really did sports as a kid. My parents were addicted to drugs and uh, a lot of that. So I was neglected and abused all growing up. Um, I eventually was supported by my second grade teacher and taken out of that situation and then put into a shelter home slash, uh, it's like a treatment center. And then after that, I was put into a foster family for four years. After that, I was adopted to a different family when I was 14. And uh, along the way, they thought a skinny little dude needs to get some muscle on him. Never really happened, but, um, <laughs> and they got me in wrestling, pretty sure I cried and peed myself the first time, <laughs> and then after that, I, uh, got into pretty much everything that I could imagine, and, uh, I ended up getting hit in the head with a baseball bat and getting brain surgery, and so I had to quit doing um, wrestling, and so I picked up the next safest sport, which is rock climbing. <laughs> My mom was pretty stoked on that. Not so much. Um, and then from there, I had some rough years, and uh, I competed as a, a youth in junior nationals. Um, there wasn't a time I didn't podium. I usually took first place as a kid. Um, a little rough for you from the street. And uh, now I'm currently on American Ninja Warrior, if you guys watch the show. It's just a giant playground for, for adults. But yeah, that's kind of what I, that's my background story. Thank you, Bongo. Bongo. So, <clears throat> I'm Cody. Uh, I grew up kind of enjoying endurance sports from the, pretty much as soon as I could walk. It was like running and... Uh, then later got into cycling and raced uh, professionally as a mountain bike racer and a road bike racer in my early 20s. And then the process kind of took me and I found triathlon. Um, and now for the last, I don't know, 15 or so years, I've been focusing on the off-road version of triathlon, which is called Xterra, uh, which has the swimming component and then also mountain biking on trails over mountains and all that, and then the trail riding component. Um, and it's just been Kind of what I've been doing ever since. So I raced professionally on that Xterra series this year. Uh, we're, I'm focusing on the Pan American Tour, so it's going to have me racing in Canada, uh, the U.S., Mexico, and maybe into Central or South America as well. Uh, so really looking forward to representing ASEA in all those countries because I know it's getting big and bigger in Canada and Mexico. And, uh, probably been an athlete with the SEA the longest. I think 2010 is when I was introduced to it and kind of did my own personal tests uh, with it, kind of seeing what it does for athletic performance. And I can kind of explain that a little bit later in the next uh, Q&A segment, but uh, all I can say is I'm still here with it six years later and couldn't keep up the training that I do without it, for sure. So, happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kathy, I'm Cody's wife, and we um, train and race together. I'm usually a little bit behind him, 
And um, my background is running. I grew up um, in Indiana. I ran and I played basketball. But I didn't get into triathlon until we met about how many years? Eight. <laughs> Eight wonderful years. Um, learned to swim as an adult, which is quite the challenge. Um, and I learned to cycle. I was drawn to mountain biking more than road cycling and learned the hard way how to mountain bike. Lots of bruises. So I um, really enjoyed endurance athletic, athletics. Um, in 2014, I was the Xterra Age Group National Champion. And that was pretty exciting. And that's in the old lady category. I'm 41, almost 42. Um, also, yes. also part of my background is that six years ago I had a spinal fusion surgery, three levels, and it was pretty major. And um, so I'm really grateful all the time that I get to exercise and train and race at an elite level. And I am also grateful for ASEA, because like I said, I'm not a young pup anymore, and I need help getting my cells rejuvenated so I can go train another session. All right. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, my name is Michelle. I am from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Woo! <laughs> Five years ago, I lost control of my motorcycle going 120 kilometers an hour. I hit a guardrail uh, head first, did cartwheels in the air, and hit the guardrail again. So upon impact, I broke almost every single bone in both my legs. I had bilateral compound tip fib fractures. I shattered my pelvis, both my hips, my back, my right clavicle, puncture lung, bruised my spleen. And when I broke my right three burns two places, it severed my femoral artery, so I was bleeding to death. By the grace of God and really good paramedics and an air ambulance, I lived 23 minutes, which is pretty unlikely when you sever that artery. I was brought to the hospital, my body deteriorated quite quickly. I was on life support for seven days. I went through five surgeries. I needed 28 units of blood, which is almost three times what my body holds. And in the end, I lost 75% of my right leg. But right away, I was determined to become a Paralympian. So I worked really hard. I got back on my snowboard. And at the time, I was full of hardware. And my surgeons were like, this is not a good idea. So I duct taped memory foam to my body. <laughs> I figured it out. And I, I went back to doing everything that I was doing before, motocross, um, wakeboarding, kayaking, all that stuff. And in March 2014, I became the first female Canadian Paralympic snowboarder. <laughs> It played a big role. That was right before my World Cup season this year. This year, I was on the podium every single World Cup and won my first World Cup. So it's definitely played a role in my successes. I'm now a Sony Potential Athlete for 2018, and I'm hoping that with us, yeah, I can bring home some hardware. Wow, this is a tough act to follow. <laughs> um, my name is Dexter Yates. I'm 70 years old, and I'm a... I'm an Ironman athlete. Um, training. Uh, I have been active all of my life and then um, I got into a point where I was not able to recover fast enough to keep the training needed to do a 16, 17 hour race. I've never been fast but I can keep going and but recovery was starting to take too long so um, when 
Sean Burke introduced me to Asiya at his gym. Uh, I just thought I'd found the fountain of youth and was able to go out and do the training that I needed to do every single day and get up the next day and look forward to it where uh, prior to that I would get up the next day and think, oh, I don't think I can do it. And then after he got me on it, I was on it for a few months and I went to Boulder, Colorado and won my age group. I was using ASEA between each event and even halfway through the bike and halfway through the run, I had a little shot in my uh, special needs bag and got me through the race. I won my age group and qualified to go to the world championship in Kona, Hawaii. Wow, this is really impressive. Um, you all work incredibly hard, you have long training hours, exercise hours, but then a lot of athletes do this in the same. So how important is the mindset to be a winner? And how do you focus? Kathy? One of my favorite phrases to tell myself is, make it count. Because there's many days I don't feel like doing a workout. But a friend of mine named Renata Mikheva from Switzerland used to train with us each year, and that was her mantra. If I was fussing about doing a workout, she'd look at me and say, you're already out here, make it count. So I repeatedly tell myself that when I'm fussing. Because I know I'll be grateful later that I did the workout. Yeah, for me, it's um, just knowing that I had a second chance at life and that I'm grateful for it. I do struggle with anxiety, performance anxiety, but it's just finding my happy place and um, knowing that my race usually only lasts a minute and 30 seconds, so that I can compose myself for a minute and 30 seconds. I'm not, you know, 17 hours, um, so I, I think I can hold it together for that long, but it's, I think it's preparation leading up to that. We do so much for those races, and so much time goes into it, and so it's just um, thinking of all the hard work that has gone in, and just be proud of that moment. Yeah. Um, I think what gets me mentally prepped, and it is a long day like I mentioned before, but um, she was speaking of her mantra, and mine is, don't let what you can't do get in the way of what you can do. And so many people have been special. Thank you. I was once told that as a young youth, <laughs> that um, to accomplish things that have never been accomplished before, you need to do things that you've never done before. Um, and that's very individual. And for me, um, ASEA was a no-brainer to try. I, as an athlete, I obviously was on supplements, um, pre-workouts, things like that. And to cycle off that and go into ASEA, I wanted to try it. Uh, I think most athletes are a little skeptical in the beginning. Um, but definitely it has given me the ability to have the mental confidence to approach each obstacle and each thing that I do with perfection. In it. And knowing that my body is in tip-top shape and being able to uh, do anything I put it, put the test, um, put it to the test. And so um, that for me is what's important. And that's what SIA helps me accomplish is that mental capacity. Because in my sport, you make one little mistake. You've seen it over and over again, you're over, it's done. Your whole season's done. So. You have to be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the things I think is hard in training in any sport is the pain. It hurts. <laughs> uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger um, has a quote, and I don't have it down word for word, but I, I go by all the time. Um, of no one on this, um, no one on God's green earth can feel this pain. This pain is yours. You've earned it. This pain is not your curse. This pain is your privilege. Uh, and I think about that all the time uh, during hard swim sets of, I have the privilege to be able to swim. I have the privilege to be able to work out for a living. I have a privilege to be able to have a wonderful sponsor like Asiya. Um, and it 
it just kind of lets me see it in a new perspective of you could be doing a lot of things with your life, but you have the privilege to be able to um, compete in sports, and that definitely helps. Thank you. Tony? Yeah, I would kind of go off of what uh, Bree was just saying that, uh, you know, the way I look at it is sport and training for most athletes is, it's like an adult form of play, basically. So it's, we're here to push ourselves, challenge ourselves, but the bottom line is it's, we do it because it's fun and we love it. Um, and we're also very fortunate, um, maybe Michelle knows that more than any of us up here, that to be able to participate and get ourselves to a high level. So I think keeping that in mind is really crucial as well. Thank you. I think, I think you mentioned that there are, there are also times where you have to go through a down phase where you're not so good, your condition, your body doesn't feel that well, or you just lost competition or something like that. How do you get yourself through the hard times? How, how do you motivate yourself? Not to give up, but to stand up again and try it again. What, do you, what, what is your personal yeah. journey? Yeah, uh, I'll keep going here, I got the yes. mic. Uh, I think for me, the biggest thing is actually my partner here, Kathy. <laughs> She's like my number one fan, and so it's like, she just does that. I feel very fortunate to have her on my team, and she's, like I just said, my biggest fan. So when something doesn't go as well as I wanted it to go, she's always right there to kind of give me the, the pep talk to, to keep at it. And uh, there's always another race or another event to, to focus on and uh, improve yourself. So. I'll take a stab. Um, so for me, uh, obviously growing up, like I had a lot of failures in my life and I look at those failures as just opportunities to get better and get successful in whatever I choose to do. And I mean, in the end of the day, we're all humans, you know? We have kids, we, some of us do. <laughs> and um, we all have our things that we do at the end of the day. And um, for me, if I'm not growing personally, um, after each trial and each time, um, then I'm not doing it right. And I'm not getting the happiness. Like, it's supposed to be fun. And if I'm not doing that, then those failures, and if I'm letting those get me down and tear me down, then I shouldn't be doing the sport anymore. Because really, you should be, like, stoked for those moments. Okay, thank you. is really hard and there are a lot of burnout stages just throughout the season itself um, my my main goal is just to make it to the end of every season sometimes I think it's really hard in the winter when you go from the cold outside to the cold pool back to the cold outside with cold and wet hair and um, it's really rough sometimes going through uh, the season but just one day at a time and if you can make it to the end of the season where you see your final result um, I always ask myself, was it worth it? And, you know, 10 times out of 10, I always say yes, and it's worth doing another season. Thank you. My business partner used to always say to me, when you feel the worst and you try the hardest, you gain the most. And so, uh, um, I have been snowboarding since I was 13, and so I was fairly good at it. And to go from being able to do something so well to learn how to do it all over again differently, it's it's been a challenge for sure. But again, I'm grateful for my second chance at life and just to have the opportunity to go out there to represent my country and to have a community, a community behind me, especially my sponsors, that lift me up when I'm feeling down or um, feeling like maybe my accomplishments aren't as great as I would hope. So the community, I would say for sure, gets me through um, through my dance. Thank you. Gosh, um, I've had some down times and <coughs> I always have to look to the future and what is else is possible out there. Um, I'm sure every one of us has had failures at something that we thought we could do and weren't able to, and 
then when you find something that you can do, you get excited about it and you look forward to it and you really push on to reach that next new goal, whatever it might be. Thank you. I think there are definitely ups and downs in training as well as ups and downs in racing and they're different. So to get through like the long winter of training where you're not usually racing, um, I'm definitely grateful for Cody and our other friends that train with us because I'm very social. Like Cody will go out and do a five hour bike ride by himself and that's not me. I want to go with a friend. So I definitely look to, to my social group for my training partners um, to get me through you know, the long winter. And then in racing with the up and downs, I guess I'll just have to say what Cody said too, that like if I'm disappointed from a race, uh, he has to hear about it for hours. <laughs> and then I just have to pull myself together and have a good night's sleep and, you know, I'm over it. Um, and I have, we have three teenage daughters, so they don't really care if I got third or fourth or first. So they're just <laughs> proud of me for being a cool mom who's in shape and, and racing. Thank you. You're all using the CEO. Uh, what is the most significant improvement? What do you feel ever since you, in your performance? What do you feel ever since you use it? Michelle? I have found that my recovery is a lot quicker now. Before I was seeing my Cairo, my athletic therapist, um, each once a week, as well as doing ice baths, which are terrible. Um, five days a week, and now I've gone down to ice baths once to twice a week as well. I only have to see my Cairo um, once every couple weeks, my athletic therapist once every couple weeks. So it's that recovery and not feeling so sore because I broke so many bones, it's been a long recovery for me, and I have felt that my performance is also a lot better too. I carrying around a 20 pound prosthetic leg, which is essentially just suction to my, um, to what I have left, is very exhausting. And so I have the endurance now when I get to the, the top of my race course uh, to, you know, give it all I, I have for that minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> um, I have to agree with her that recovery has been my greatest find. Um, it got me back on the road to be able to train as much as I need to. So I would have to say the recovery is great, but I also enjoy the Renew 28 I've been using, and it seems to really refresh my legs. I've used it between um, transitions on the Ironman race. Uh, I don't know exactly the science behind that, but it seems to help. <laughs> and so I would have to say the recovery and the refreshment uh, renewal type thing that happens in my body. Thank you, Dexter. <laughs> yes. The weight yeah. family. <laughs> um, hands down, the recovery is amazing. One of the things that I've found for me personally to be one of the biggest benefits is the, the way it helps improve your aerobic efficiency. So when you have an athlete that is competing in an event that's longer than, say, 20 minutes, up to many, many hours, aerobic efficiency is, is the key to success. And what I found early on and why I stuck with the SIA for so long is that it improves that aerobic efficiency. What I mean by that is it allows you to go the same speed at a lower heart rate, which basically allows you to go further, or you can kind of flip that around a little bit and, and look at it as I can push to a higher heart rate and go faster, depending on the length of the event. So. For me, that's been the biggest benefit is uh, more on that performance side of improving your aerobic efficiency and improving both the endurance and the speed uh, of the competitions that I'm doing. So, uh, amazing product, for sure. Thank you. I'm grateful for Sia uh, for like, my general health. I guess recovery is another way to say it, but I have a very busy life with three kids and running a business and training. A lot of hours each week, um, and I just think it keeps me healthy. Like this week, I had a super stressful week when things going on, and I could feel that cold coming. You know that feeling you have. And I was like guzzling those pouches, and so afraid I get sick, and then I didn't. And it really does feel like a magical potion. <laughs> and I would echo um, 
what Dexter said about the Renew 28, I love it, love it, love it. Um, just for like this repairing the sun damage to my face and the stretch marks from the twins. So, um, that's all good stuff. Thank you. Um, I'll just go back to my first experience with the SIA. It was about six to eight months ago. Um, I was training balance and I was getting too confident and really jacked up my ankle. And I thought, I've broken my ankles before and I mean, I'm a rock climber and it's like the number one thing we break. And um, I was sure that I was done for the season. And my, I've never had it swell up and it looked like a grapefruit. It was disgusting. <laughs> I already have girl's feet, but it was really gross. <laughs> And so I um, was sure I was over and I was hobbling. I teach at a treatment center, um, teach art at a treatment center. And I was hobbling around and um, one of the chaplains, she came up and she's like, you need to rub this on your foot and drink this now. Because she is always watching the show and she's like, you need to be on it this year. And so I, I did it. And within five days I was snowboarding. And so I, I think, you know, for me that was an eye-opener that, whoa, holy crap, this actually does work. This isn't a fable, this isn't a fable, this isn't in a storybook, like, I'm snowboarding right now. So it was really neat, um, but for, yeah, that's kind of like my main thing with the CEA, to be honest, and it just continues to amaze me. Um, in my sport, you make one mistake, like I was saying, and you're done for the season. And so for me, ment I have to be on my mental game, and knowing that with a CEA, I can cover quicker and be ready for my next workout it's really helped me accomplish a lot more and I, I'm still learning it I'm still learning how to use it when what works best for me and I think that's going to be an ongoing thing for the next couple of years but thank you very much Rhea. since I started using this video when I started competing um, I didn't notice quite much of a difference but I did notice when I started taking more uh, I think my best experience with it has been my junior year at the um, SEC Conference Championship Meet. I was drinking so much Asia, so much Asia. <laughs> I'd have eight ounces right before a race, eight ounces right after a race, and then probably eight to 16 ounces in between sessions. I must have guzzled out at least three gallons. It was so much to see. <laughs> um, but I never felt lactic acid once, which is an incredible thing for a swimmer, because after that race, I mean, I was tired, um, but when I went to go warm down, I would usually warm down for maybe 20 minutes, and I felt good after 30 seconds, which my coach still made me continue warm down for 20 minutes. But um, I love coming out of a race feeling exhausted, but not as fatigued. Um, I really, really appreciate the recovery that it gives me, and I think it really helps me continue to train as hard as we do. Thank you very much. I think we could, we could continue like this for hours and hours and hours, but unfortunately we have a schedule and our time is over. I have to admit, I'm, I'm so proud to be on the same stage with you. You are really role models, and I'm so happy to have you in our 